Funnies and funny lovers, welcome back to the channel. Lorelai here, and today I'm gonna be helping you guys figure out what kind of rabbit breed you might have. So I know this can be sort of a puzzle that we have to put together because unfortunately, there's no such thing as official DNA testing for rabbits. And of course, there's DNA testing for dogs and cats, but bunnies are always left behind. So there are other methods in which we can kind of narrow things down and I'm gonna help you guys do a little bit of that detective work today. As you guys know, I'm not supportive of breeding in terms of ethics, but I am quite fascinated by the genetic makeup of rabbits and sort of the historical aspect of where they originate from. So if you're into that sort of thing, please keep watching. I know especially for us parents with mixed buns, I do believe Lennon to be a mixed bunny. This is especially important because we wanna to try to figure out, you know, what our bunny's ancestry is. I am gonna draw a lot of my information today from the American Rabbit Breeders Association, also known as ARBA, and every country and region is gonna have their own version of ARBA, so you just have to, you know, Google it. But as a result, you know, every association is gonna recognize breeds differently, so that's all gonna be contingent on what those standards are in that country. There are a lot of breeds that look very, very similar to each other, but have completely different genetic makeups, and people conflate them all the time. For example, the Otter Rex and the Silver Martin, or the Californian and the Himalayan but those all have vast differences. Without further ado, let's hop right into this. Please smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for unlimited bunny content. And I also wanna give a big thank you to our sponsor today. Today's video is sponsored by Power Vision, so big thank you to them. The Power Vision S1 is your mini lightweight phone gimbal, which is so perfect when you're on the go. As a YouTuber, having a gimbal like this is perfect for being able to capture me and Lennon in our vlogs but you don't have to be a YouTuber to enjoy this little guy. Just toggle to pan and tilt. The auto tracking is one of my favorite features of the gimbal. It follows you around so it looks like someone else is filming you. Take a look. The in-app allows you to edit your footage with background music and filters, but best of all, its compact size allows you to just throw this little guy in your purse or pocket for easy transport. Some other cool features include three axis stabilization, gesture control, a built-in tripod, and it's also a portable wireless charging assistant. Please check out the PowerVision S1 gimbal. I'll link them in the description below and our code gives you 5% off your order. So the first thing you wanna do is check those ears. A rabbit's ears are very indicative of their background. Are your rabbit's ears lopped, as in falling down and framing your rabbit's face? Are they partially lopped, possibly due to heavy fur on the inside, kind of weighing down the ears? Or do the ears stand upright in the traditional rabbit ear fashion? If your answer is A, you're probably looking at a rabbit of lop descent. This will consist of the Holland lop, the mini lop, the English lop, the French lop, or the American fuzzy lop. These are the only lot breeds currently recognized by Arba. If your answer is B, it's possible that your rabbit is more of an Angora breed. I'll break down the Angora breeds a bit later. If your answer is C, which it probably is more than any of the other ones because the upright eared bunnies are the majority, Currently, approximately 37 of the 47 breeds recognized by Arba have upright ears, so we're gonna delve into that even further. Is your rabbit big or small? So go ahead and weigh your rabbit. Is your rabbit between two to four pounds, four to six pounds, or more than six pounds? If your answer is A, your bunny is likely of a dwarf descent. Some varieties consist of a dwarf hotote, a netherland dwarf, Britannia petite, Polish, lion head. Now the Holland Lops and American Fuzzy Lops are also in this size range, but again, they have very different ears. They have the lopped ears, so that is why they are eliminated from this category. Now the Dwarf Hototes have very distinctive markings. They've got like that thick black eyeliner around the eye. The Netherland Dwarfs and the Polish have very tiny ears, and the Britannia Petite is gonna have more of an arch-shaped back. 
If your answer is B, so not small but not large, you're looking at a variety of possibilities. I'll name a few of the more common ones. The Dutch Rabbit, which is known for its distinctive white blaze and saddle. The Havanas, which are typically a solid color, such as black, chocolate, lilac, or broken. Many Rexes have a velvet-like coat. Florida Whites have pink eyes, and Himalayans have more of a distinctive color and cylindrical-shaped body. If your answer is C and your rabbit is larger than six pounds, that's gonna bring us to another variety of possibilities, such as the Checkered Giant, English Spot, Flemish Giant, Rhinelander, Giant Angora, New Zealand White, the Californian, to name a few. And yes, some of these look similar, but the color patterns are quite different. Now the New Zealand Whites, those are the ones unfortunately that have historically been used in animal testing. The Flemish Giants, which Arba considers to be the biggest breed of rabbits in the United States. Those guys can weigh 20 pounds and up. And I would also lump Continental Giants into this category as well. They are known for being some of them even larger than the Flemish Giants, but Arba does not recognize them as a breed. However, they are recognized in the UK as a breed, so it's just gonna depend where you're from. Okay, next, evaluate the coat. So now that we've looked at ear types and sizes, the coat is the next step. Do they have soft, short, and average rabbit fur? Is it long, fluffy, and wool-like? Short, thick, dense, and super soft? or shiny and lustrous. It's quite likely that you answered A to this question because the majority of rabbits have this kind of fur. Approximately 37 of the Arba recognized breeds out of 47 are gonna have this kind of fur. If you answered B, then you're probably looking at a rabbit of Angora heritage, American, French, Satin, Giant. You can consider the American Fuzzy Lop and the Jersey Wooly and I would even put the line heads into this mix because they have very long fur and they've got that lion's mane. If your rabbit is more of a satin fur, then they're gonna come from a satin breed such as the mini satin or satin angora. Finally, if you answered D and your bunny has short, dense and velvet-like fur that's going to put them in more of a rex category and even a chinchilla rabbit category finally you want to look at the rabbit's shape is your rabbit short compact wide deep and full arched along its back underbelly with long limbs or long and slender cylindrical shaped you probably answered a which again is sort of the more common standard rabbit shape most rabbits are classified as compact with short, deep, round bodies. Now, if you answered B and you've got more of a slender, arched rabbit, it could be a Belgian Hare, Britannia Petite, Checker Giant, English Spot. And then finally, if you answered C, you've definitely got a Himalayan because they are the only ones who have a cylindrical shaped body. Okay, so the mixed question here. How do you figure out what kind of rabbit you have if they fall into two or more categories? Well, you just have to try and familiarize yourself with the images of the different breeds and see if the characteristics match up. I'll give you an example. We can see here that this rabbit has the markings of a Harlequin, but the fur of an Angora albeit shaved down. So we can deduce that this is likely a Harlequin Angora mix. And then to figure out the origin, we know that the Harlequin originated in France and the Angora originated in Turkey. And to piggyback off that, breeders will often sell off their mismarked or mistaken rabbits. For example, Lennon is a Vienna gene carrier and the Vienna gene is the gene that produces blue-eyed white rabbits. So oftentimes, if the bunnies do not result in the blue-eyed whites, they will instead display white markings such as on their paw, collar, nose, just exactly like Lennon. And you might even get rabbits that display these white markings so close to what the Dutch rabbit looks like that people often conflate the two types of rabbits. But if you look closely, the purebred Dutch rabbit, it has very perfect lines in terms of the markings, whereas a Vienna Jean carrier does not. So if Lennon would have ever mated with another Vienna Jean carrier or a blue-eyed rabbit, 
her babies would have likely had blue eyes. Funny enough, this variety of rabbit that Lennon is, is a recognized breed in Sweden known as the Melarud rabbit, but it's not recognized in the United States. So again, every country is gonna have different recognitions. So that's really interesting. And obviously this can go on and on and on with regards to every breed, right? So ultimately guys, I really recommend you to familiarize yourself with a lot of the images displayed in this video, along with doing a little bit of your own research. I hope this was helpful to you. And my question of the day is, what breed of rabbit do you have? And I would also like to know if any of you guys have a Vienna Jean carrier rabbit. If any of your bunnies look like Lennon, please comment down below. All right, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, and we'll see you all soon. Bye.